If there's one hand in poker that sparks more debate than any other, it's ace-king. Some players call it big slick, others call it big brick. I fall somewhere in the middle, but if I had to choose, I lean toward ace-king being the most overrated hand in poker. Hi, I'm Terry Wood, and in this video, we're going to take a hard, honest look at ace-king, both suited and off-suit, and break down exactly what it is and what it's not. We'll look at the math behind ace-king. Common Ace King Poker Mistakes, and the strategic adjustments you need to make if you want to play this hand for maximum gain. Whether you love it or hate it, there's one thing you need to understand. Ace King isn't a made hand, it's a drawing hand. And if you treat it like pocket aces or kings, it's going to cost you. Let's get started. Before we break down the math behind Ace King, let me just point something out. If you search online for how to play Ace King in poker, you'll find thousands of results articles, videos, training sites, all pushing one version of the same message. Ace-King is a premium hand. Always raise. Always re-raise. Play it strong. Interestingly enough, not one of these articles or videos has the slightest clue under what context you are playing any given hand. How could they? But here's the truth. Poker is a situational game. No two hands are the same. No two players are the same. No two tables, no stack sizes, no dynamics, no decisions ever repeat themselves exactly the same. So the idea that someone can tell you, without knowing your position, your opponent's tendencies, stack depth, or the action in front of you, or what's behind you, exactly how to play any hand, that person doesn't exist. And if they did, they'd be the king of poker, and no one could beat them. At Poker Railbird, we don't believe in rules. There is no one and only way to do anything be that in poker or in life. We believe in learning tools, which give us the ability to think through each situation and the context of that situation as it arises, not a scripted response that fails to consider the context. We've never attempted to tell anyone how to play a hand, and we're not going to start now, because we can't know the context of the current situation, but you can, and when you pair context with real data, you get clarity. So in this video, I'm not going to hand you a set of pre- or post-flop malarkey rules. What I will give you is the math, the equity, the reality, so you can make informed, strategic decisions, hand by hand, situation by situation. Let's take a look at what the math says about ace-king. Let's talk about the hard numbers behind ace-king, both suited and off-suit, and what they really mean. There are 16 total combinations of ace-king, for suited, and 12 off-suit. The odds of being dealt ace-king off-suit are 110 to 1, or roughly 0.9%. The odds of being dealt ace-king suited are even slimmer, 331 to 1, or about 0.3%. Statistically speaking, you're more likely to be dealt pocket aces than you are ace-king suited. So the odds of being dealt any ace-king, suited or off-suit, are 83 to 1, or 1.2%. So when you do get it, it feels strong, and it is strong, at least pre-flop. But that doesn't mean it's reliable. Let's start with how often you actually connect with the flop. You will miss the flop entirely about 65% of the time. That means no pair, no draw, just two high cards, hoping something improves on the turn and river. You'll flop one pair, either an ace or a king, 32.4% of the time. That's 2.08 to 1 odds. You'll flop exactly two pair, one ace and one king, just 2.02% of the time, or 48.5 to 1 odds. You'll flop a straight, specifically 10 jack queen, 0.33% of the time. That's 305 to 1 odds. The probability to make a straight pre-flop to river is 3% or 32.33 to 1 odds. Trips, flopping either ace ace x or king king x happens 0.67% of the time, or 147 to 1 odds, and a full house on the flop, just 0.04%, or 2,217 to 1 odds. So in total, your chance of flopping anything meaningful, a pair or better, a straight or a combo draw, is 32.75%. That's 2.05 to 1 odds, which means you miss more than 65% of the time. Now, let's talk about that suited ace-king, the hand people love to overplay. You have all the same probabilities as off-suit, plus a 0.86% chance, 118 to 1 odds, of flopping the net flush. You will flop a flush draw about 10% of the time, or 9 to 1 odds. 
If you do flop that flush draw, you have about 4.22 to 1 odds or 19% probability of hitting it on the turn, and if you miss the turn, you have about the same odds of making it on the river. In total, you have about a 35% probability or 1.9 to 1 odds of completing the flush by the river. That's assuming you get to see both cards. In most games, there will be a bet on both the turn and river, which will require individual pot odds and hand probability calculations for each street independently. So yes, ace-king suited is better than ace-king offsuit. With ace-king suited, you have a 43.69% probability of something good coming on the flop, which is roughly a 10% improvement over ace-king offsuit. But even then, you're still missing the flop more than half the time. But let's go one step further. How does ace-king actually perform when it's up against real hands, specifically pocket pairs? Most players think of ace-king as a race hand, a classic coin flip. But here's the reality, when you go up against any pocket pair, even pocket sixes, you're behind. That pocket pair already has a made hand. You don't. Let's look at the actual equities. Ace-king versus pocket twos through pocket fives, you're about 46% equity. Against pocket sixes or higher, your equity drops below 45%. Versus pocket queens or kings, you're hovering around 30%. And against pocket aces, you're dominated, sitting at just 8% equity. Think about that. You're sitting there with a hand everyone tells you is a premium, and you're getting crushed not by traps, not by coolers, but by hands that actually have something. So while ace-king looks great on a screen, the math is indifferent to your optimism. It's not a coin flip. It's not a monster. It's a drawing hand, and a fragile one at that. Many players feel obligated to fire a continuation bet with ace-king no matter what. And to be fair, most articles and poker books that cover how to play ace-king tend to reinforce this, recommending a c-bet almost automatically, whether you connect with the flop or not. But if the flop is wet or coordinated, or you're up against multiple opponents who don't fold easily, firing a c-bet with complete air can light your stack on fire. Once again, this is a situational decision. It depends on factors like how many players are in the hand, stack sizes, player tendencies, flop texture, ranges, game dynamics, the size of the current pot, and more. It's not an opportunity to bet blindly without thinking about the actual context. On dry flops and in heads-up pots, a c-bet can still be profitable either as a semi-bluff or because ace-king might still be the best hand. Either way, the hand carries real equity. Any ace or king on the turn or river could easily give you the best hand at showdown, if there is one. But on draw-heavy boards, especially multi-way, where you've completely missed, sometimes checking behind is the smarter path. The more players in the pot, the more dangerous ace-king becomes when it misses. Even against just two opponents, the chances that at least one player connects with the flop skyrockets, as these players didn't call a pre-flop raise with nothing. If you miss and still try to play ace-king like it's a monster, you're the one being hunted, not the hunter. Ace-king looks great pre-flop, but once you miss the board and you will 65% of the time, it's crucial to assess board texture, player types, and position before blindly continuing. Otherwise, you're just throwing good chips after bad. Missing the flop doesn't always mean giving up. Sometimes, ace-king turns into a powerful drawing hand, especially when suited. But to play those draws profitably, you need to understand your outs, how to calculate your equity, and whether the pot is giving you the right price to continue. Let's say you hold ace of spades and the king of spades, and the flop comes seven spades, ten of spades, and the two of diamonds. Here's what you've got. Nut flush draw. Nine spades remain. Two over cards, three aces, and three kings still in the deck. That's a total of 15 outs. Cards that can improve your hand to what is likely the best hand. What are your chances? Turn only, 31.9% or 2.13 to 1 odds. River only, if you miss the turn another 33% or 2.07 to 1 odds. Combined turn and river, your probability is 54% or 0.85 to 1 odds. That means you'll complete your hand more often than not, and that's also assuming that all of those outs are live. We must remember, 16 unseen cards are dealt out in a nine-handed game, not counting the two you have. That's 30.76% of the deck out among the other eight players. Now, there are only 13 card ranks, and of course four of each. With 30.76% of the deck out that you haven't seen, 
it is reasonable to assume that some of your outs sit in opponent's hands or in the muck. Let's say the pot is $100 and your opponent bets $50. You're being asked to call $50 to win $150 that gives you 3 to 1 pot odds, 25%. Your hand equity with 15 outs, which means you are about 2.1 to 1 on both the turn and roughly the same on the river. But there may be another bet after the turn card, so you will have to reevaluate your pot and hand odds for each street. In this case, calling is clearly profitable as the pot odds exceed your hand equity. But if your opponent bets $100 into a $100 pot, giving you only two to one pot odds, now you need to be more cautious as you are now working with a slightly negative pot odds situation. This is where implied odds and fold equity can come into play. When ace-king picks up a draw, it can be a mathematically strong hand, but only if you understand your equity and compare it to the pot odds. It may not be a good idea to chase just because the hand is pretty. Chase when the numbers say it's worth it. Once the flop hits, math doesn't disappear, but it's no longer the only factor in your decision making. You now have to weigh probabilities against human behavior, table dynamics, and board texture. Ace-King becomes tricky post-flop because it often lands in a gray area. You've got nothing yet but tremendous potential. Or you've got top pair, but it's vulnerable on a coordinated board. Or worse, you've missed entirely and now have to bluff or fold. Let's walk through how the math interacts with situational awareness. Against calling stations, top pair may not be enough because they'll chase draws and two pair possibilities. Against tight players, your continuation bet may succeed even when you miss. When playing against aggressive players, ace-king can act as a trap, but only if you're in position and reading them well. Understanding your opponent's range and tendencies can turn a borderline math decision into a confident play or a wise fold. Yes, pot odds and drawing percentages matter, but a profitable decision on paper can still be a mistake in context. Math gives you the green light, but the table tells you whether the road ahead is clear or full of traffic. Post-flop, Ace-King is only as strong as your read on the situation. The math may be correct, but in poker, correct math played in the wrong spot still costs money. When playing Ace-King after the flop, think in layers. Know the math. What is your position? How coordinated is the board texture, and what are your opponent's tendencies? As we said at the beginning, Ace-King is not a made hand, and it's not a license to pile chips into the pot with blind confidence. It's a high-powered tool, sharp, effective, and profitable when used with precision. But like any tool, it can be dangerous in the wrong hands or misused under pressure. Treating ace-king like pocket aces is one of the most common mistakes made at the table. It looks premium, and it is, but its true value lies in how you play it after the flop, not just how you feel about it before. Understand the math. Evaluate the texture. Play the situation, not just the cards and you'll get far more out of Ace-King than the players who shove it blindly and hope. I'm Terry Wood, and thanks for watching. If this video helped clarify Ace-King for you, hit like, share, and subscribe. And check out the full article, The Infamous Ace-King, at PokerRailbird.com. As always, good luck to everyone, and we'll see you at the tables.